going to be a lot of people in Hashtag Nation who, <laughs> who are unaware of the animal that Khalil Hodges is. He's he, an animal. He hasn't finished running his 40 yet. Right? <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing? No, no. Subscribe now and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush, April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. <laughs> but to your point, the guy, 38 games played, yeah. 25 of those games he's had double-digit tackles, two yeah. times having 20 tackles in a game. Yeah. He is all over yeah. the damn field. Well, quick fact about Khalil Hodges. This is really important. <laughs> How quick? You're <laughs> faster than his 40. <laughs> So, Khalil Hodges, in the last three years, has 74 more tackles than the next closest defensive player. He's got a whole season worth of tackles <laughs> ahead of the next closest player. So, why is one of the most prolific tacklers that UB has ever had, right? Why is this guy talked about as a sixth round pick to undrafted? Why? Hand size? 504. 504. His 40 time. Yeah. Um, His 40 time's scary. That is, that is, see, now here's, here's a great discussion that we could have now with this because we talk about as soon as DK Metcalf ran his 40. Everyone said first rounder, first yeah. rounder, top ten, top ten. Yeah. So we see the, the how people get just mm -hmm. they ignored his three cone, his, yeah. you know all the other stuff. They said, hey, listen, boy, look at his pro day. He's ready. He's a top ten guy. Look at his forty time. And they always mention that up every time. It doesn't say anything about how the guy plays football. Right. That's how he runs in a straight line. Mm -hmm. This kid for three consecutive years has played Division One caliber football. Mm -hmm. And has been flying all over the damn field. Killing people. Yes. But the thing I, I wanted to just bring up with you, it's not really a counter argument, but it's just one of those things. I did the dive with Leopold. Mm -hmm. And his final season there at UW Whitewater, his middle linebacker mm -hmm. was the defensive player of the year in Division Three. Ooh, okay. Had like 90 tackles. Jesus. Um, so... I don't know if he brought that system with him. Well, Hodges just doesn't doesn't play primarily inside. They slid him outside as well, so he did play all over the place. Oh no, I, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is that if that if that kind of a system that he brought, defensive scheme, came over and is like, listen, this is geared to what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our best defensive player and it's gonna free him up. Whatever system we have. It frees him up to make tackles, and in the case of, I think the guy's name was uh, Cole. So I, I can't remember what his name was, but he was the defensive player of the year in, in Division Three. Uh, Leopold's last year at UW Whitewater. So, if if that's the system that's that's set up, like we talked about with Jackson, mm -hmm. for that person to be successful, but how do you ignore a guy that's had over four hundred tackles right in three years? Yeah, it's madness, right? So. First off, the one thing I will say about Hodges that I really like um, is he doesn't really have a problem getting guys off of him. But again, you look at competition and you can say inside linebacker going against sub-par interior linemen. Yeah. Yeah. You Okay. How many is he going excuse, through, though? Right. You can make excuses for production. Right, saying mm -hmm. that he's just a better athlete. I love, I love his field vision. I oh. love how he gets to the ball carrier. He, if I could can't. take, if I could take his, if I could take everything from here, and put it on Tremaine Edmonds, oh, he he'd be unbe unbeatable. And that's not saying that we. That, and I don't, and it's, and I'm not, not, I'm not downplaying any, Tremaine, and yeah. Tremaine, Tremaine Edmonds at all. I'm just saying Tremaine that's, Edmonds is a freak inside linebacker. 
Yeah. From a physical standpoint. Just you're, a total just, you're just freak. saying that this guy, that Hodge, is just that he get. You can't run a five and be in all the positions he's in to make tackles. Right. If you don't know what you're doing. Right. But the thing about it was I, that's bothering me is that all right. This guy's not talked about as not even a day one, day two pick. No. And this guy just flies all over the damn field. Mm -hmm. All right, you're talking about conference. Great. Well, he has more tackles than anybody. Yeah. Forget conference. Right. All right. Um, his 40 wasn't that great. Who cares? Who cares? If he can get from over the over the center to tackle faster than anybody else, right. I don't care what his 40 is. Right. So that, I think, is what's happening. He's 6'1", 230. But we talked about it as well. In the new systems that happen, for him to be a three-down, if you're drafting in the first two rounds, he's got to be a three-down back at least. Right. Three, not three-down back. Three-down linebacker. Yes. So that means that on third downs, he's going to have to cover. Can he cover? How is his ability in coverage versus any of the top linebackers that are scouted? Because right. that's probably what's uh, dropping him to the fifth and sixth I can, round. I can counter that. Are you ready for this? Sure. Khalil Hodges had the second lowest QB passer rating when targeted. Really? Yeah. Who was he on mostly? Because I didn't I didn't hear Again. about a tight end in the Mac going anywhere. Again, right? Here yeah. but that's that's how easy that you could that, that's what I mean. You look yeah. at the production and you say, well okay he's got great field vision. You know, he really cuts through the hole well. Well is that because he's playing against guards that look like they're playing with one arm? I don't know. It's the Mac. Right? We always do that, but that's just, I mean... Well, we do that, but uh, draft rooms do the same thing. So you look at production, yeah. you say, okay, well, he's got the second best pass, QB passer rating. The quarterbacks have the lowest, let me rephrase, because it's it's upside down, right? Mm -hmm. So when a linebacker has a great QB passer rating, what that means is the quarterback has a very low QB passer when rating. When they throw it at him. Right. Yeah. So when he was in coverage and targeted, he had the second best defensive rating if you're looking at QB rating as being the measuring stick, right? But again, you look at who is he covering. Exactly. Who yeah, is he covering? Yeah, I don't, I don't, right. But the, yeah, it's, that's the, that's the kind of the cheap way out. It like, is. The cheap it argument is. out. And, I, and I'm not trying to make an argument against the kid. What I'm trying to say is, okay, was he covering a slot receiver or a tight end? Cause that's a big difference right. in a pro style versus a spread. Right. Um, what was the down and distance? Mm -hmm. You know, I need to know those those factors. That are, was he always just man up on a tight end on third and 15 and the guy ran a drag? Here's the deal. So, Marvin Lewis got his hands on Khalil Hodges. He'd be, a, he'd be a Pro Bowl player in four years. That's the deal. Marvin Lewis? Mm-hmm. Marvin Lewis got his hands on Khalil Hodges. He'd be a Pro Bowl player in four years. Why Marvin Lewis? Look at the longevity of Marvin Lewis linebackers. From Cincy? Yeah. Look at look and at Baltimore? Yeah. Look at the longevity that those guys had. I mean, here's the deal. Khalil Hodges has is not as big as you want most interior interior line. He's not as fast as you want oh, linebackers. He's not as fast as you want. An outside linebacker. You're not asking to play outside linebacker. He's going to be playing inside, right? Three, four, four, three. Right. Uh, he. Well, he's only six. He's not. He's actually not even six one. He's six and a half. Six feet. So you. Six and one half. You just so subtly have been stacking up reasons. Wait. Okay. He's a fir makes all these tackles. First round player. Okay. He's not. He's not six one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second round. He runs a five, fourth, fourth round. round. You know, like mm -hmm. all those things you keep stacking up against him. That's right. why, because, but the thing that's getting lost here, what you said, the guy has probably of any bat, any linebacker in the draft, the most natural linebacker instincts He's to awesome. get to the ball, He's to awesome. get everywhere. Yeah. Awesome. So watching, watching film, <clears throat> watching him play is fun. Like, you know how sometimes you'll watch a guy and you're just like, oh, my God, what is this kid doing? It's I, You don't see that with him. Yeah. He's always there. And you look at some teams and you say he would be a dangerous team for him to go to. This team he won't make because they'll not, they won't be able to – they'll 
they won't they won't be able to get the best out of him. They won't put him in positions to succeed early, and yeah. he'll find his way off the roster because he's going to be a late pick. So there's no team's going to tie their wagon to him, right? But then you look at a team like uh, what what's a good? Oh my God, it goes to Pittsburgh. Linebacker, you right? Well, this guy was a Buckus fine. He was on the Buckus watch list. Like he can't make them he's any talented. And not be on it. He's very very talented, but height and speed are going to be the things that are going to be knocks against him. And those are reasons linebackers go undrafted. You can't down, you can't downplay them. Those are reasons linebacker goes go undrafted. And this kid should because he is really talented. Now it's Khalil Hodge. The equivalent of a running back that would get picked for the Bills. Mm, what do you mean? Can develop. Doesn't have to start right away. <clears throat> A guy that you could take a f- fifth, sixth, or seventh. Those, those, are, those are the flyers. Yeah. If he goes to a team that has linebackers already that are mm-hmm. solid, he could probably go to Seattle. Yeah. He could probably go to Carolina. He could probably go to um, um, who's got a who's got a solid nucleus of linebackers. I don't know. But that point being is that he can go to a team where it's much easier to develop somebody's physical traits than their mental. Mm -hmm. So if he already has it upstairs, then, okay, this this, your rookie year, we're going to work on speed, overall speed and quickness. Watching Khalil Hodge on film reminds me of watching Roquan Smith on film. Wow. It really does. Pretty high praise. It's again. I'm. I'm not talking about physical traits. I'm just talking about the way that, the way that he approaches the game. Mm. Watching, watching him reminded me of watching film on Roquan. Mm. Inside linebackers are so devalued in the draft, right? Super devalued. We thought, but then Roquan went ninth. Roquan didn't he? went ninth. Yeah, he went super high. So ridiculous. But that well, was the first time we had seen. Went, he went high. He went. High, he did go high. But that was the first time we'd seen an inside linebacker fly up draft boards. Yeah. The fact still remains that you look at a player like Khalil Hodge, and he's he should be on an NFL team, and he should be drafted. But height and speed are going to kill him. But if he ends up in the right situation where a team is willing to be patient with him and understands that he's not, gonna, he's not playing sub packages, you go nickel, he's coming out. That's it. If you're comfortable with that arrangement, he's going to be a great player for you. Yeah. But you can't, I don't think you can ask him to stand in the middle of a sub package. I think you got to take him off. He's great yeah. in coverage, right now. though. Right, right now. now. Okay. Right. Great in coverage. Covers really well for a guy that runs like a center. It's like I said, though. I mean, runs like a center. You got a guy that plays, playing a tight end, in the, uh, covering a tight end in the MAC and covering. The slot receiver in the NFL coming across the middle. Not the same. Are two different animals. Not the same. But I mean, I, I, I that's that that to me is the one reason why I, I don't like everyone that just goes on the stats and all that. Mm. As far the stats as far as the physical traits. Agreed. He's not six one. He ran a five forty. And then we joke about it. Yeah. We, like we joke about it. But that shouldn't be what discounts what this kid is as a football player. Right. I shouldn't discount that. I agree. 